This uh, subject, planning sustainable infrastructure, has been going for a number of years. Now this year we've gone a little bit uh, further and we've looked at uh, Jabiru uh, with the proposed uh, development of the Ranger 3 Deeps underground uranium mine that's currently going through the environmental impact statement and uh, asked the students to prepare some expression of interest associated with doing the environmental impact statement, what it were the social, the environmental, uh, the market constraints on the operation of the mine and then also to look at the development of the Jabiru town from 1,500 now to 3,000 people in the future. The mine's going to close in 2021. What is the Mira people going to be doing for their economy into the future? Well, this year we got to design and redevelop uh, four main stages of Jabiru Town, and uh, each section was water, waste, uh, energy, and transport. The tra stage fifth transport, um, where you're looking at alternative um, methods of transport, so instead of everyone driving to work or driving to the shops in their own car, we're looking at carpooling, also using um, bicycles, implementing more bike tracks, things like that. Um, I guess just giving people different options so you don't have to rely so much on vehicles. It's a pretty important city right now because we have the Ranger, Uranium Mine that is one of the biggest in Australia. But there is always uh, also a conflict between the Ranger and the Mirai people that is the Aboriginal uh, community that lives there. So we try to make uh, to work as hard as possible to make uh, both of these parties work together and to make a better place for the city to live. The basic uh, thing is the carbon flow, the pollution, the greenhouse emissions. And if you consider the greenhouse emissions from Australia, 50% is from energy and about 20 to 15% comes from the transport uh, sector. So our focus is in energy sector and transport sector. When we're coming up with our solutions, we had to make sure that solutions were cost effective and practical for a population of only 3,000 people. So, for example, we did consider a system, a highly technical system called anaerobic digestion for our food waste, but we thought that is too expensive for a population of 3,000 people. It'd be more effective if we use the food waste to produce composting instead, and that's going to help us recycle the essential nutrient phosphorus. So really, we're just growing food from food waste. Companies and also clients are looking for these kind of infrastructure responses um, to communities because you need to look at a series of elements in being able to respond to the issues facing our cities today. So having a multi-disciplinary uh, approach and a multi-lens uh, approach to things is also very relevant. So we're quite excited that uh, we do have now Professor Sakai from uh, Kyoto University who's come here today to talk about uh, the tsunami uh, waste creation in Tohoku in the March 2011 uh, tsunami and the problems associated with the nuclear reactor and the contamination of that waste with radioactive uh, materials. This type of uh, some, uh, project of uh, sustainable infrastructure is a very good challenge uh, I think for the young people. The, such an integration is a uh, 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 comprehensive uh, solution. Anyway, we need. Yeah. After that uh, lecture, um, the 65 students were very quiet. And uh, I think I might have scared them all off as soon as I mentioned the word land rights. Uh, but um, after seeing the, uh, the uh, poster sessions uh, this evening, uh, I'm really, really uh, uh, relieved, <laughs> first, uh, but impressed with the kind of work that the students have actually produced.